Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji guys. Fuji guys are going to go through the top features now of this great new S1 camera. And again, just to remind you quickly, it's a beautiful bridge camera, built-in lens, but a 50 times zoom, which gives you right from wide angle to super telephoto. It's a weather-sealed camera with an articulating screen, full Wi-Fi capabilities. When we go through some of these top features, you're really going to see some of the benefits of some of these things that I've just mentioned on this camera. So Billy, just take us through some of the top features. I know there's a lot, this could be a long video, but give us uh, the best demo you can on some of the top features. Sure, good. This is Fuji's uh, first you know, weather resistant you know, um, camera that offers a super long zoom up to 50 times. Uh, it's fully sealed from the elements in the sense that it's, it's protected from dust. Uh, it's even freeze proof, as well as you know, weather resistant, meaning you know, a little bit of water, rain, is not going to damage the camera. It is, uh, of course, uh, in order for it to be sealed, you're going to make sure that all these tabs here that, are, that, that exposes contacts are properly closed in. Again, the battery door here has a nice rubber ceiling. There's actually uh, 70 different areas that it's being sealed on, but make sure that, again, there's no debris so that uh, it does have the proper ceiling. Again, the LCD, which is, again, articulating as well, is also fully protected um, from the elements uh, that you see here. So, you know, although it is weather resistant, you know, that doesn't mean you should take this underwater uh, because it's not going to be submersible. Uh, another thing is that, you know, if you're wanting to clean it out, using a, a damp cloth is fine. But if you start sticking this under the tap, there may be issues there. So you want to obviously take good care, even though it is a, a weather resistant style camera. Uh, it is ideal to take with you, and it is the world's first, you know, 50 times zoom that offers a all in one package that's weather resistant. The S1 offers a 50 times optical zoom lens. It goes from a 24 millimeter all the way up to 120 millimeter in terms of equivalencies to uh, 35 millimeter. Um, the lens itself is a very fast lens. It's an f2.8 at wide. And at full telephoto, it's a 5.6. And that's quite impressive for a camera that can reach up to about 1,200 millimeters. So turning on the camera, you can control the zooms. Uh, I'm just going to flip out the LCD screen here uh, by using the uh, zoom controls on the top. See? And you can also zoom on the side. And it's really fast as well. Now, you can also go into the menus and configure the uh, zoom controls, I believe, to be uh, a slow if you wanted to. So let's go down until we see the uh, zoom controls here. So side zoom lever, it's on high. I can set it up to low. And what that's going to happen now is that when I use the zoom control on the side, it's much more smooth. And that's going to give me a much better video when I record video. But the top still becomes very fast if I wanted to get in and out of a, a shot. Okay? Uh, there's also a button right here that when you actually hold it down, it, it allows you to zoom out quickly so that you can see the frame. And then when you let go, it zooms back in. It just makes it easier for you to, uh, to frame a shot. Again, you know, if I'm really close up tight with somebody, I want to follow that subject, right? So let me zoom out. Right, and I want to see a little bit more of the scene. I push that button, and uh, it just zooms out quickly. So I can see more of the scene, and I can zoom back in again. And it helps me track a subject. If, I, if the subject kind of comes out of the screen, I push the button. Oh, I see the subject. Follow the subject. Let go. It goes back to the zoom controls. And of course, I can take my snapshot. So that is the zoom controls. Uh, in addition to it being a 50 times zoom, there's also a macro mode that gets you down to about uh, one centimeter away. So if you wanted to take really close uh, photos here, as you can see, even in closer, let's see if I can get even closer there. You can get some really good details. I push the playback button and I can zoom in on this and you can see how close I can get and how sharp this lens is for super macro. I mean, this is definitely telling me that I need to use some uh, hand cream here for my skin because it's quite dry. So again, that's just a look at the zoom controls on the S1. Now this camera offers two ways to compose your photos, either using the LCD screen, which is an articulating screen. So again, you can rotate it like this. I guess you can do selfies if you wanted to. You can rotate it this direction, any direction you want, high, low, as you can see. You can even close the LCD back onto the camera to protect it 
from scratches if you wanted to. Uh, that's automatically, once you do that, it's going to switch to the EVF that's on the, uh, the, the top here, as you can see. There you go. So as I take it out, it should then switch it back to the LCD screen. So it's smart enough in order to actually do that. Uh, in addition to that, <clears throat> you can force the, uh, the camera to use the EVF by pushing the EVF button. So I push that, and now the information is on top of the EVF. Okay. Now, if you wanted to push the display back button, you can customize or, I guess, show the different options for the display on the screen. You can push it uh, one time for information on, turn off all the information on the screen, have the grid lines display show up, even have an HD grid line display show up, so 16 by 9. And then you also have a, a live histogram, histogram option uh, that you can use. And this is the same for using the EVF. So you can configure uh, them to, uh, to uh, show what you prefer uh, using the display back button on this camera. The S1 has you know, some cool feature effects. I mean, you can do manual controls through aperture uh, controls and shutter controls. But there is a mode called Advanced Filter that allows you to do 10 different cool effects, as well as eight video effects. So in this mode here, you go into the menu, and you would go to the Advanced Mode. After you set the Advanced Dial, uh, you, you can go and select the different options, like Toy Camera that gives you a retro look, Miniature Effect, Pop Color, High Key, which brightens the image, Low Key that darkens the image, a dynamic tone, this gives you more a dramatic effect to the photo. There's even a fisheye effect that you can see here that's kind of cool to see. Um, there's a soft focus, cross screen, and even partial colors that isolate uh, the color from the foreground. So for instance, here I have a blue camera. If I select uh, blue, only blue appears on the screen and everything else becomes monochrome. So if I take that snapshot here for you, okay. Uh, just as an instance, everything is monochrome except for the camera itself, which is blue. If I zoom in, you can see the blue still appears on the screen of the shot. So that's kind of a nice, cool effect to do. Uh, in addition to that as well, uh, if I go back into the uh, advanced filters and select um, even things like um, the fisheye effect, right? I can actually do video doing that as well. So I have that fisheye effect uh, video. So you can also do uh, the advanced filter effects with video, not just uh, with the, uh, the photos this time. So again, looking back at that video, you can see that that cool fisheye effect is kind of neat for guys who want to do that effect, whether you're a skateboarder or um, you just want to have that cool effect. The S1 is one of the first Fuji cam to offer the uh, ability to remotely control the camera from your smartphone, whether you're using an iOS or Android device. You would have to download this camera remote application that can be found for free. Uh, and once you do that, uh, you can then connect the uh, camera, of course, to your smart device. So in order to do that, you push the Wi-Fi button on the, on, the, on the camera. It puts it into a Wi-Fi hotspot mode. You then would open up the camera remote application and click on remote control. It should then find the hotspot, auto connect to it, and of course uh, then give me a live view from the camera's operation, which allows me then to control the uh, camera. Now, if this is the first time you ever connected, you may have to go into the settings menu of your smart device and ensure that the Wi-Fi is auto connecting to the camera, and it will appear as an option there. Uh, again, it's telling me here just to go and make sure that it's connecting. So I'm going to go here, make sure that the camera is selected there. As you can see, it is selected. I'm going back to the, app, the, to the application, and I'm just going to retry it again. Just uh, may have never connected it. And as you can see, it should connect instantly once it did the first connection. And as you can see here, this is a live view. So as you can see, you know, I'm getting a live view from the camera's controls. I can, I can control the zoom on the camera. And I can zoom out. You can see I rotate the camera, and you can see that nice live view. I can zoom really, really fast as well. And you have that options, OK? You have, you also tells you how many shots are left, the flash mode, if it's being used or not, the battery life on your camera. You can take the photo by pushing the shutter button, as you can see. Um, you can ten, turn the self-timer mode on, put it two seconds. And it takes the snapshot. Again, you can change the different flash mode. Of course, it's on suppress because the flash is, is off there. That's fine. You could play back images. 
and it will actually browse the images that, that are stored on the camera. As you can see, I took two photos. I can select those photos, and I can input those photos onto my smart device. And this is a nice little feature to have if you're going to do any family shots or shots where you know you want to take photos without adding shake to the camera, you can. And it's great that you have this live view uh, control as well. Uh, in addition, you can slide the, the level to record videos if you wanted to. Start the recording of the video. And as you can see, the video is recording from the camera. You can also stop the recording like that. So it is a nice fully functional camera remote application that allows you to control the camera in its limited ability. Now, with this particular camera, you can't control aperture or shutter speeds. It's really going to give you more the basics of releasing the shutter, uh, allowing you to zoom in, zoom out, uh, and playing back images uh, on the camera. So that's just a quick look at the camera remote application with the uh, S1. This camera offers full HD video at uh, even up to 60 frames a second. To record video, you just have to push the record button. There's no other dials that you need to set to. doesn't matter what mode you're at. So I can push the recording. I can zoom in during the recording as well. And it will allow me to zoom in. Uh, it also uses different focusing options, like face detection focusing, which allows me to focus uh, during the video if I wanted to. I can also set it up so that uh, you know, it doesn't focus during the video, which is, means you know, it's not going to hunt if it needs to. So I, I prefer that option sometimes. Um, as well, you see this number on the top. It means you can actually take photos during the video. So I can push the shutter button and take snapshots. And it won't have any interruptions to the video whatsoever. To stop the recording, I push the record back, uh, record button. I'm going to play back the image now. And you can see this is the image that, that's being captured. It's actually a 3 megapixel image during the video. And then the actual video itself will have a film strip to the side of it, meaning it is a video. You push down to play it. And that's the video playback on the camera. At 60 frames a second, you get a nice, very fast refresh rate. Okay, and you can stop the video by pushing up. If you go into the menu, um, let's just go back to the shooting menu, that is. So again, push the menu. I can go into the um, scroll down until I see the movie mode. And I have options for video. I can do full HD video, 720p. I can even do high speed videos uh, up to 480 frames a second. I'm just going to show you the uh, 240 frames a second to see what that looks like. Basically, I'm going to drop this pencil down, and as you can see, I'm going to start recording. Hopefully, I capture that. <laughs> I'm going to play back the uh, image and uh, see if... I guess that was uh, too quick there. Let me try that one more time. So again, I'm going to uh, uh, record, drop the pencil, and... Stop the recording. I'm going to play that back. See that short time frame? You should now see a, a slow motion video of that pen uh, dropping onto the table. And that's the cool little slow motion effect that you can do. Of course, there's no audio. And uh, depending on the speeds that you choose, the frame rate or the resolution will be a lot less. So at 120 frames, you get 640 by 480. Uh, 480 frames becomes 1240, 180. Again, this is good for, you know, maybe taking photos of a, a water balloon blowing up, even a, a golf swing if you wanted to do that. That's kind of cool to see. But that's just the uh, slow motion video function on this camera. Uh, in addition to that, you can change the autofocus mode on the video. So if you don't want it to continuously focus, you can set it to do center focus. Uh, and that will only set the focus for when you first start the video. You also have the ability to turn, off face, turn on face detection. So during video, it will use face detection to focus uh, uh, continuously as well, if that's what you want to do. Now, of course, you're going to either use this camera in the automatic mode or even some manual modes. But there are other modes that you can go through, the, through the advanced diode. Unlike the advanced filter, there's actually other effects like the pro low light mode that takes multiple shots of the scene and merges it together into one photo to give you a cleaner looking picture. This is useful, of course, when shooting in low light situations, but recommended that you put the camera on a tripod or a ledge to keep it nice and steady. Uh, another mode, of course, within that, uh, within that advanced mode is the HDR mode, and it does it very similar. It takes, uh, again, multiple shots of the scene, um, and it merges the highlights and shadows so that you retain more detail so that you know, when you're taking a nice bright scene which has high contrast, it's going to retain details in the highlights as well as the shadow area. 
Uh, aside from that, you also got, uh, you know, even uh, things like the uh, zoom con bracketing mode. And in that mode, it basically allows you to take one snapshot and it crops three different crop factors for you automatically. And it saves it to the back of the camera, as you can see, and uh, just makes it easier to, to take one shot with different uh, uh, crop factors. But again, these are some features that you can check out uh, on this particular camera. Now, if you're shooting outdoors, uh, you know, you want to take single shots, no problem. You got the shutter button halfway down to focus, all the way down to take the photo. You can also just keep pushing the button and it will uh, be pretty quick to take photos as well. Uh, but if you wanted to uh, do even faster speed shooting, you can turn on the continuous shooting button uh, mode, sorry, and turning that on allows you to shoot at very high speeds uh, and uh, again up to about 10 frames a second. So if you can see by me uh, holding the button down, you'll see how fast it shoots. And that's going to capture uh, basically 10 photos uh, or 10 frames a second, uh, up to 10 photos. So when I look back at the image, again, you can see I can push down and look at the nine shots that I've taken there. Or just hold it down. And again, it's going to take the guesswork out of uh, any high speed shot uh, that you need to take. So that's a good thing to look at. There are different other modes that you can play around with, like the last, uh, sorry, uh, like uh, best frame capture. In the best frame capture mode, you can set it up so that uh, uh, basically um, the way it works is that this line here is your shutter button line. So when I push the button, it's going to take a photo. Right now, how, it, how it's set is that um, you know, I can do 18 frames, 18 photos. Eight pictures will be taken before I push the shutter button, and nine pictures will be taken after I, I, I fully depress the shutter button. And there'll be a photo taken as I push the shutter button. And that's eight, nine. If I move it along the way here, as you can see, I can configure it so that 12 shots get captured after, five shots before, and one shot at the shutter line. So again, here's how this works. I'm going to hold the button halfway down, and it's not going to take really any photos until I push all the way down. So I pushed all the way down. It took that photo. It's going to take the remainder photos as well as the, the earlier photos that I set it to be. So if it's 5 and 9, it's going to do, uh, do that. So what I set it was 5 and 12. So it's going to be 5 shots before, 12 shots after. And uh, again, it just helps to take the guesswork out of uh, taking a photo so that uh, you can you know, push the button even before the subjects crossed into the area that you want to capture them in. So there's some really cool effects and, and, and modes that you can shoot for the uh, continuous shooting on this camera. If you wanted to do some time-lapse photos with this camera, there is a feature built into it called the, uh, uh, the I guess, an intervalometer. Uh, to access that, you go through the self-timer button here. You push down. You can select the different options here, including the interval shooting at a set interval. From there, you can select every 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, up to 10 minutes. Let's just use it for every 15 seconds uh, and the duration up to uh, 5 minutes. So let me just set that up just to try it out. Okay, so I'm going to set that. I'm going to put it down here and uh, I'm going to take the photo. And again, it should be starting. The camera takes the first photo, it turns off, and hopefully after 15 seconds, the uh, camera turns back on, takes the second photo. And it turns off again. And it's going to do this up to 15 minutes because that's what I specify. And of course, uh, you know, I can just maybe push the off button here. It's going to stop the recording. And just looking back, you can see the, the shots that have been taken in the interval. So again, you can use software on your computer to merge it together to create an, a, a video that, that has that time lapse, or you can just use photos uh, for that purpose. So that's just a quick look at the intervalometer option on the S1. To do motion panorama on this camera, there's a dial for it. You can turn the dial to the panoramic mode there, and you can do up to about 360 degrees. Um, you can configure the angles so that uh, you don't have to do 360, you can do 120, and uh, you can also change the direction. So instead of panning left to right, you can do the opposite. You can even do up and down. Now here's a, here's a tip for you. If you change the directions to up and down or, 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 or down and up, uh, what you can do instead of doing this type of panorama, you can actually rotate the camera uh, in a in a um, um, vertical position, and you can get higher resolution now because you're using the width of the sensor versus the height. So there's just a quick look at me doing that, and uh, now that I play back the image, you can see you get a nice wider 
uh, panoramic view. Now, if I show you that same panoramic and I change the directions to left to right, again, same idea here. Okay, I'm going to play back the image. This is the one that's shot left to right. And this is the one that's shot uh, vertically. You can see it, it opened it up further. So I got more resolution out of it, even though I got the same angle of view. So this is a good tip if you want to get a little bit more image quality so that you can make a print uh, and even a higher resolution print. And that's just doing it vertically. And again, that's the panoramic mode on this camera. Now the camera defaults to uh, JPEG shooting, but uh, this camera does offer the ability to shoot in a raw file format. You would go into the menu and go into image quality and select the different options of fine and normal. Those are JPEG compression. Fine means very little compression. Normal means a little bit more compression, so the file size is smaller, but again, the image, uh, you may get artifacts from JPEG. So again, if you want the best quality, you want to set it to fine. You can also do raw shooting, so you have different options here. You can shoot with raw and JPEG fine, or raw and, and JPEG normal or you can just shoot purely raw. So when you set it to raw, the file is going to be very large, so I do recommend you pick up a very fast card. But when you take a photo with that, that raw file can now be processed on your computer uh, using the included software or even using um, a software, a third-party software that's out there to configure it the way you like to. And raw gives you some flexibilities. If you accidentally use the wrong white balance settings, you can actually make it easier to fix that versus if you shot JPEG, it might be a little bit more difficult to uh, correct things like that. So again, you have that capabilities with this camera. Anyways, as I mentioned, there were a lot, to lot of top features on that camera. I really love that new Wi-Fi app, uh, especially being able to you know, put the camera on a tripod, be able to control it from, a, 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 from your smartphone. And see a live view And from see a live view on well. there yeah. and being able to zoom and everything. It's, uh, it's space age, but I can think already of a few things that I'd like to use that for. So thanks for that great uh, top features video for the FinePix S1. Make sure you check out all our videos by subscribing to our YouTube channel and follow Billy on Twitter to get all the latest updates on Fuji products. Until the next video, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji guys. Thank you.